You love horrible histories, don't you? Yeah, I do. How much would you say you've watched? A lot. You just want to get going, don't you? Yeah. As I've explained multiple times on this channel before, if you open up a book every now and again, you'll find that history is littered with tons of cool shit. Something the TV kids sketch show, Horrible Histories, was only too keen to prove. In the process, winning awards and praise for its historical accuracy and educational content, in addition to its humour and entertainment value. Oh, sorry. Woo! <laughs> So obviously we've both read and seen Horrible Histories, but yes. I'm pretty sure it's quite a British thing, isn't Very it? Very British, yes. So maybe for people who aren't British watching, do you want to maybe explain what it is? Yeah, for anyone who isn't familiar with what Horrible Histories is, as you might not be, it's a series of kids' books that was obviously turned into a TV show, which we're talking about today, that focuses on the more gruesome and stupid aspects of history in order to keep kids' attention. So for example, it talks about things like the fact King Henry VIII's corpse exploded after he died, or the fact that the Normans won the Battle of Hastings by repeatedly running up and down a big hill. Both things I've written about, you can find links to below in the description. Is it? Description? Yes. Wow. You can tell I'm, how uncomfortable I am with saying that by the fact I completely stumbled over all my own words because we never do that. <laughs> do you want to plug links to anything else while we're at it, Carl? Uh, my Twitter profile is also down there as well. Follow me on there. <laughs> Thanks. I was actually expecting you to do it. Yeah. A worthwhile thing to talk about in regards to the ways the book and the subsequent TV show are written is that they were done so in such a way as to not be patronising towards children, and in fact actively sought to address common misconceptions they may be taught in schools. Yeah, they get pretty dark as well, don't they? Yeah, like they talk about World War II, like the Holocaust, and slavery. However, they're written in such a way as to obviously make it suitable for the intended audience of young children. So I, um, I think the rat, who they get? Yeah, the show's hosted by a rat. It's horrible, but it's true. He talks about it sometimes when he talks about um, uh, child chimney sweeps. They have like a sketch about that and the rat comes on afterwards and says, as funny as that was, a lot of kids, like he's talking to children and watching at home and me, just sat there in my pyjamas with a beer, saying like there were a lot of kids back in those days who like unfortunately were forced to work in these like really horrible conditions. There's no joke here, just sometimes history is not very nice. It's horrible. But then that's because this is horrible histories. I just think it's really nice that like the show and the books, they don't shy away from talking about stuff that obviously is within living human memory and like most teachers and most adults would find uncomfortable to talk about with children. So I think the writer of them, or the writer of the show at least, is saying like, well, kids aren't stupid, they're just tiny adults. So talk to them like tiny adults. In specific regards to the TV show, the writers, knowing that it would also be watched by parents, went out of their way to include many references to British pop culture. So there was entertainment value there for adults too. We were born to rule over you. George's one, three, four, and two. What's your favourite? It's got to be Stupid Deaths. Stupid Deaths is the best. We're going to put a clip in. Because of course we are, because if Brad doesn't, he's fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dead funny. <laughs> Stupid Death is the best thing that show did. It's basically exactly what it sounds like. It's the Grim Reaper. It's going, Stupid Death. You pull, the, pull the clip in, I can't do it justice, it's great. Stupid Death, Stupid Death, they're funny because they're true. Stupid Death, Stupid Death, hope next time it's not you. <laughs> It's this guy, and you can tell he is chewing the fucking scenery. He loves it, and he dresses like a big, dumb, grim reaper. And people who've just died share stories of how they died. And these are true stories from history of stupid ways people died. And in later seasons, they turn it into like a sort of X Factor ripoff. And they have it, and he's sat there, and he's got two skeletons either side of him, one wearing a wig, and the other one wearing another wig. And they're very clearly supposed to be Sharon and Louis Walsh. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, that's three yeses. You're through to the afterlife. And he never mentions it except for in one episode where he, like, because I think he ad libbed a lot of his lines because he's just like, he's just going ham and this guy's fucking loving it. And he whispers in one of the skeleton's ears and goes, Oh, shut up, Louis, and backhands him across the head. And the skeleton's wig flies across. And it's fucking brilliant. Oh, shut up, Louis. Ooh. Me and my housemate, where I used to in second year, fucking love this show. We'd put it on record and we'd watch it when you get in from work. And we'd sit down and he'd cook us dinner and we'd watch Horrible Histories. And I remember that shut up Louis moment 
put him on his fucking ass. Like, he went down on the floor, beating his fists against the floor, laughing, and rewound it so he could watch it again. No, shut up, Louis! And our housemate, our other housemate, Kenneth, says, what are you doing? And he saw us watching this kid's show, absolutely howling, and went, you fucking idiots, and walked back upstairs. <laughs> Do you know what he said? Shut up, Louis! <laughs> no, shut up, Louis! So good. This show's amazing. And you know what? It's on Netflix. Go watch it. Oh, no. It might have been on Netflix in America. So that means for what Americans have to use, they're going to have to put a VPN on to watch British one. So I think they all use it to watch like Top Gear and shit, don't yeah. they? And I use mine to go watch American Netflix so I can watch Pack and Rat. It's great. Oh, shut up, Louis. <laughs> put it in. Put it in five times. <laughs> no, shut up, Louis. Because the show went out of its way to appeal to adults contain educational content, in addition to bizarre non sequiturs and toilet humour, it eventually found itself being popular with the biggest kids of all, stoned adults and teenagers. And Carls. And Carls. So how popular was Horrible Histories? During the time it aired, it was noted as being the most popular comedy show on TV, period. Not kids show. Yeah, no, it's how I didn't say kids show, I didn't use the modifier there. I meant exactly what I said, the most popular comedy show. That's how fucking good this thing was. There were adults who were tuning in at like 3 p.m. to watch this show. I think they actually changed the time it aired to about 4 to 5 p.m. just so adults could catch it on the way home from work. That's how popular this thing was. And I think in 2010, it won an award from the British, it won a British comedy award for best sketch show. Not best kids show, best sketch show. That's how fucking funny this show was. I should probably point out that this achievement is doubly impressive because Horrible Histories not only had a lower budget than every other show it was competing against, but also had the additional constraint of having to ensure all of its sketches were factually and historically accurate. Yeah, and don't forget, it also had to make sure it was suitable for children. Yeah, and despite all those constraints, they still won Best Sketch Show that year. So get fucked every other British sketch show on TV in 2010. Do you think it would be funnier if they ever did an adult's version of it? I don't think it would be, now. I like the idea it's for kids because it means that all of, like, the adult stuff has to fly under the radar, which makes it all the funnier. And let's just have an aside for a moment because I need to address Dickwig. <laughs> People think, what are you talking about? Like, Brad, you're going to put a clip in here because I had an argument with that housemate I've talked about when we watched this show together where in one episode where I believe it's a sketch about King George IV finds out that his father's died and therefore, you no, know, Prince George IV and then he becomes king. Dad's dead, dad's dead, oh gosh, I'm king. Ah. And during that conversation, someone tells him, like, are you sure you shouldn't be a little sad that you're like, your dad's died? And he says, I think, shut up, dickwig. Are you sure you can't squeeze out just a small tear? Certainly not, dickwig. And I laughed for a good 10 minutes at that. And I've watched that episode multiple times since then. And like, we argued for hours and hours and hours about whether or not he actually says the word dickwig. Because we looked it up and we can't find it as being any sort of historical insult. And we thought, we must be saying something else. But it sounds so much like dickwig. So, audience at home, does this guy or does this guy not say the words dickwig? Certainly not, dickwig. Please, I've been arguing about this for years. I need closure. So Horrible Histories is meant to be a factual show. Yes. But then it's also meant to be funny. Yes, kind of like this show. <laughs> so do you know if at any point they ever like exaggerated the truth for comic effect? Oh, you mean like bent the truth, like, you know, just a little for the sake of a joke? No, because they had a historical advisor on set who had to look over all their scripts to make sure they were entirely historically accurate. And according to him, in his entire tenure working on the show, he noticed eight errors out of 4,000 facts presented, which is an error rate so small it could be used to measure the width of an ant's dick hole. It's like there are probably history books in classrooms right now that have more errors in them than that. Like probably the Wikipedia page for Horrible Histories probably has more errors on it than that show had in its entire, like, half decade long run. It's a pretty impressive figure, to be honest. It is, and it goes to show that there's enough stupid shit from history that you don't need to make stuff up. You can just present history exactly as it was, and it was funny enough on its own. Has nobody got an ordinary name in this classroom? Yes. Toilet? All right, be quick. No, that's my name. Your parents must be evil. No, that's evil over there. In addition to hiring an on-set historical advisor to ensure that all the lies said during Horrible Histories were correct to the best knowledge of historians, the costume department went to similar lengths to ensure that all the costumes and makeup shown were period accurate to the time in history they were supposed to be representing. 
Like, that's really nice. Like the idea where like, we don't want to give kids an unrealistic like image of what history looked like. So we're going to use like realistic hair and makeup methods for the time period that we're trying to show on TV. Like, our budget's not great, but we try in. Like, I think they go to the same quarry quite a few times for multiple <laughs> episodes and they go to the same field outside the BBC studio to record multiple sketches and skits. But the effort's there and I appreciate it. So in conclusion, a sketch show aimed at children full of poop jokes and references to British pop culture was actually more historically accurate than anything put out by the History Channel these days. Yes, even ancient aliens. Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. So you just mentioned ancient aliens. People are going to expect us to talk about ancient aliens. I don't want to talk about ancient aliens. I'm so sick of that show. <laughs> Alright, well, why not talk about something that's equally factual? Like what? The Flat Earth. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> is this the bit? Is this the bit we can talk about? Are you one of them? Are you one of those? Do you like go out and do you like take pictures of the horizon, draw straight lines on it and post it on Facebook? I saw one guy pouring a jug over a football and said, if the world was really round, the oh, water would have poured off the sides. Or fall off, yeah, because he doesn't understand the concept of gravity. <laughs> if a helicopter takes off on an Earth that is spinning, why does it land in the same place? Oh, it's like, it's nothing to do with the fact that the atmosphere is also fucking spinning. <laughs> I've actually written an article on this that you can find on uh, Top Tens. Where I wrote, Top 10, no, it's Top 10 Reasons We Totally Live on a Flat Earth. And it was written, obviously, with my tongue planted so far in my cheek, I could taste the fucking wallpaper next to me. But I discovered a load of cool shit about flat earth theory, including the fact that if you are a believer in flat earth, if you're out there, if you're a believer, you are in the same lofty company as Adolf fucking Hitler. Because according to flat earth theorists, one of the few people to have ever, like, you know, gone to the edge of the earth is Adolf Hitler. Because apparently it was part of Nazi era Germany's World War II, like, plan to go to the edge and control the rim. So yeah, if you believe in flat earth, you're in the same company as fucking Hitler. I, it's unfathomable to me that people believe this and people who know well, me- Around earth, I agree. No, a flat earth, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about it is, like when you ask them, what's the fucking point? So I wanna know, like, when, whenever you get like these vast, massive conspiracies, like a aliens, you can see why someone wants to cover that up. Like the technology they have, they may be hiding it and using it for their own gain. Or like the idea that humanity as a whole couldn't accept the idea of extraterrestrial beings invading our planet. So it's like they make the choice to keep that hidden from the public. But what value is there to hiding the fact we live on a flat earth? Like, on a flat earth. Is it, is, is, isn't it so people keep giving money to NASA? But why? <laughs> NASA can barely get a fucking plane there. Elon Musk has got more money than NASA, and he's just putting fucking cars in orbit. No, no he's not. That was Photoshop. Was that Photoshop? Apparently, oh, okay. Yeah. But the flat earthers don't... think that every picture of the space has been doctored. It's been... Even the ones that they send up themselves tend to be... <laughs> there was a... <laughs> How? It's like, you see, like, I've Na seen, NASA. It's always I've seen NASA. the videos about the people who take spirit levels on planes and say, look at that, they're messing with my spirit level. If this works on Earth, and now I'm in the plane, it's not. What's that about? Just it's not. <laughs> I'm looking at a plane, and they say it's the curvature of the windows on planes, don't they? And that's why it looks out. And if they say if you put your head out the window, they won't let you do that. I'm waiting for the day a flat Earth theory tries to open the door on a fucking plane. It's going to happen. Fuck it, we can talk about ancient aliens. Like, the idea of people building the pyramids. It all comes down to, I personally cannot figure out how this was done. Therefore, nobody else could because I'm the smartest person in the room. That's all these conspiracy theories are to me. It's just people wanting something that they can feel superior about without putting any fucking effort in. So what they do is like, how do you feel superior? Well, I've got this knowledge that no one else has. I've got the knowledge that the earth is secretly flat. I've got the knowledge that aliens built the pyramids. And then when you hear someone say, well, actually, no, we've got countless like pieces of historical evidence that it actually was built by you know, like a combination of slave labor and like actually outside uh, outside contractors that they hired from foreign countries. Like, no, aliens did it, you fucking idiot. And it's, that's all it is. It's an, it's an excuse to like, like just snobbishly look down on other people while putting in no effort yourself. It's like it's unearned like smugness, basically. I've thought about it a lot from a more like, you know, philosophical standpoint. And as I see it, the draw of conspiracy theories like Flat Earth is that when you believe that, you de facto become smarter in your own head than every expert and scientist on the planet. 
Well, not just on the planet. You're talking about everyone who's ever lived in history who's figured oh, yeah. this out. Yeah, you're smarter than like every like so-called genius who's ever lived. And I can see why that will be like an intoxicating idea to some people. Where if you believe this, this like you know this crazy idea that all those like you know the eggheads at NASA don't want you to know, you're smarter than everybody else. And I can like, and it feeds into like this unearned superiority complex. And like, and to try and take that away from people, I can see why they'd like violent and defend it. Because you're basically saying you're a fucking idiot and you don't know anything. And no one likes being told that. People love saying it apparently, but no one likes being told it. You will be surprised at the amount of mental gymnastics people can do to continue believing that they are right, that they are the centre of their own universe. Because we're all the hero of our own story. And like, even if those stories do revolve around a fucking moron like myself.